Kohei Horikoshi is responsible for creating one of the greatest anime in recent memory. From well-written characters to thrilling plotlines, there is no shortage of reasons as to why this series is loved by so many. There is one aspect of his work that I want to draw attention to in this video, however, and what is perhaps my favorite element of the world he has created, the varying character designs never cease to amaze me. While the world of My Hero Academia is teeming with various powers and abilities that are all unique, the characters themselves that possess them have some truly incredible designs going for them. So today, I'm going to be counting down my 10 personal favorite character designs we have seen in the series thus far. Since I want this video to be enjoyed by as many fans as possible, I will not be including characters that have not appeared yet in the anime. So that means anyone seen from Season 1 through Season 4 is fair game. I will reference future manga examples for some of the characters, but rest assured there will be absolutely zero plot details talked about in that regard. Thank you for understanding. One last thing before we begin, we gotta lay the ground rules. The criteria for how I will be making my rankings are as follows. First, their overall appearance. From their eyes and smile to hair and body. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, no real explanation needed there. Second, they are hero costumes. All Might says it himself. My hero! They say that clothes make the pros, young ladies and gentlemen, and behold, you are the proof! Each character's costume is a reflection of who they are, and who they aspire to be. So, of course, these are going to be a very important aspect in my character design rankings. Lastly, quirks will not be a factor in this list. For the most part. Here's what I mean. I won't judge someone like Todoroki based on how cool his ice and fire looks, or Bakugo by the design of his explosions. I will, however, take into account quirks that have affected their physical form. Some good examples being Tokoyami's Dark Shadow. While it is his quirk, it is also physically attached to him, an extension of his body. Or someone like Mina Ashido, whose quirk has changed the pigmentation of her skin to be pink, and the random horn she has on her head. With all that out of the way, let us begin. Keep in mind, this entire list is just my opinion, so uh, don't hate me too much for not including your favorite. But, by all means, let me know who you think I forgot in the comments down below. Starting off our list, we have the main character himself, Izuku Midoriya, or Deku for short. I'll admit, it is a bit strange starting things off with the lead role, seeing as how, at first glance, he can seem a little, well, plain. Hey, the others in the show say it too, it is not just me. It's hard to describe his face. He's kinda plain looking? Uh, it doesn't really stand out or anything, you know? She means me! The plain looking one? He tried to kill me with a maxed out punch. The true greatness in his design comes from the subtleties. When he begins his journey, he is small, frail, and, yes, an absolute crybaby. But as we follow his adventure, we see his encounters leave physical and emotional scars on him. From the mangled right hand he got from extending to help a friend, to the patchwork arm he will have forevermore, from the time he saved a young boy's life. If Deku started off as a blank, boring slate, then it is quickly being filled with the tapestry woven throughout the decisions and emotions that he feels, and carries forward with his ever-widening smile. Hey, it's fine. <laughs> As for his costume, it too is rather simple, but there again lies the subtle beauty. He could have made a flashy costume to get the attention of others, but it represents the love and thoughtfulness his mother showed in her attempt to throw her support behind her son, something she regrets failing to do way back when. You're on your way, kid, and looking better every day. Next up, we have Momo Yairozu. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking, gee mighty, you included Momo for best character design. I wonder why. First of all, get your head out of the gutter. Next, let's let a quick word from Midnight segue us into our analysis. Because of the nature of some people's quirks, clothing can restrict their abilities. Sexiness isn't just an aesthetic. It's sometimes needed so we can do our jobs well. Besides, what's more attractive than a hero who can get the job done quickly? To get the obvious out of the way, yes. Momo is a well-endowed character. But that is not why she is here for character design. Her costume is perhaps one of the simplest yet most genius in the entire series. 
While a casual viewer may just assume her revealing costume is for fan service, those who look a little further into logistics will begin to see how practical it truly is. Since Momo needs revealed skin to properly access her creations, it makes complete sense as to why she needs so much exposed. From cannons to giant protective sheets, not all creations are so easily equipped. Other than her costume, I'm also a big fan of her eyes. While most of her classmates have rather large and expressive eyes, Momo's are more narrow and focused, which is a great reflection of her analytical and sharp prowess both in and out of the classroom. It is also rather unique how her eye color is gray, which feels very earth-like and metallic, also doing a great job tying into her quirk. At number 8, we have the very first villain appearance on this list, Tomura Shigaraki. If you're anything like me, you too had several questions when you first laid eyes on him. Why does he have hands on his face and body? What is he hiding underneath? After his face is revealed, you see a truly shocking sight. From scratch marks under his chin and eyes, to a wide menacing grin filled with evil looking teeth. The way Shigaraki looks and moves truly work on a number of levels. While he is evil, you can still clearly tell by his facial expressions when he is in agony, giddy with delight, or pissed off to the point he nearly throws a tantrum. There is also so much greatness buried away in his design that won't be revealed for a while yet in the anime. As manga readers already know, this man just becomes more and more badass, as well as more and more understandable. If All For One wanted a worthy successor, he definitely picked someone who looks the part. Ah, uh, number 7, Endeavor. Flame, mustache, that is all. Moving on to number 6, ah, just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, this man has a flame mustache. That alone guarantees a spot on this list. Other than his rocking facial hair, Endeavor really does have the size and physique you'd expect of the man who is second only to All Might in their hero society. As we get further and further into this list, you're going to see me talk more and more about facial expressions and how they accurately bring their respective characters to life. Endeavor is not what you would call a happy man, but the image of him seeing Todoroki use his flames in the sports festival is honestly permanently etched into my mind as one of the coolest visuals in the series. An obvious observation to make is how well his angry and gruff demeanor match the fiery intensity of his quirk. When he gets mad, you don't only hear it, you see it. I know I mentioned at the beginning of the video how I would not count something like Todoroki's flame into the analysis, but I kind of feel like Endeavor is a unique exception. There is rarely a time his flames aren't wrapped around him like a child with a blanket, and that's a good thing too, because it just adds so much to the man's persona. I also love the contrast of the size he is compared to the man he has become. While his body is big and strong, his heart is small and weak in comparison, something that has become a source of motivation and a focal point in his life as the new number one hero. We have arrived at the Master of Darkness, Fumikage Tokoyami. I just gotta say it, I love that out of a whole class of, mostly, normal human beings, you just randomly have one student with a bird for a head. Not only that, but that student had a sentient shadow beast living within him. It is so bizarre and weird that it works perfectly in this world. While most of the time he shrouds his body with a black cloak, one can only think it serves as a way to protect the beast inside from sunlight during the daytime. Speaking of which, Dark Shadow is just such an awesome design in its own right. The shadows are drawn with rough, deep sketches that hint at there being more than just what you see on the surface. This is proven to be true when the beast unleashes its true form at night, revealing an uncontrollable and immensely strong side one could compare to the Hulk. Dark Shadow isn't always unruly, however. It is often calm, even friendly to Tokoyami and his friends. Revelry in the dark, my friend. You make it look awesome. Next up, we have Mina Ashido. If you were to glance at the roster for Class 1A, there's a strong chance that two individuals would stand out immediately, Tokoyami and Mina. There are several aspects to Mina's design that, even in a world of quirks, truly stand out. From her bright pink skin, the horns sticking out of her head, and my personal favorite, her pitch black eyes with yellow irises. 
When talking about her wide range of expressions, I think it'll be valuable to bring in a comparison. Take Sue as our example. Always has the same expression in nearly all situations, with an occasional smile or sad moment thrown into the mix. But for the most part, that's typically how she looks. On the complete other end of the spectrum, we have Mina. Flustered, derpy, happy, sad, panicked, shocked, and smiling. The range of emotion that she shows is honestly unrivaled in the series, with the possible exception of Deku. Which is great, because that perfectly matches the character in every way. Mina is typically bubbly and happy, but is very easy to sway emotionally given whatever the situation may be. Also, it may just be me, but I always thought the bubblegum pink skin was to match that bubbly personality. But maybe I'm wrong on that one. Her costume is also great, having a very unique pattern on the majority of the suit. The holes in the bottom of her boots also make for a great use of her quirk. Lastly, while names are not a factor in today's exercise, it is rather clever how Mina Ashido is a play on amino acids, given her quirk and all. Arriving at number 4, we have my favorite villain in the entire series. Though technically he's more of an anti-hero, but that's a discussion for a different day. Hero Killer Stain. Where do I even begin to describe how incredible Stain's design is? Wow. I suppose I'll start with his face. When we first see him, half of his face is covered by a tattered face mask, draped over his wild hunter eyes. Below, he has a wide grin, housing a tongue that is so long it can wrap around his blades, lapping up all the blood he needs. Speaking of which, Stain carries an arsenal of deadly swords and knives that he has laced all over his body. Some of which his enemies can see, while many others that lay hidden away, waiting for their moment to strike. As he lunges through the air during battle, his blood-red scars flow with him, matching every strike that he makes to his victims. Late in his fight with the students of UA, it is revealed what lies beneath his face wrappings. A deep crater exists where his eyes meet his nose. Something that fans of the incredible manga spin-off series, Vigilantes, can be giddy with excitement knowing the cause of. He may be twisted, but even citizens can agree, the man's got some deadly style. Remember how at the beginning of the video, I said one rule was that the character had to have appeared in the anime as of season 4? And how I could, however, use the manga as supporting evidence for the character. I'll be honest, I made those rules specifically so I could include this next character. At number 3, we have Rumi Usegiyama, or as most fans know her, Mirko. Anime-only fans may be scratching their heads here, but just know that you will come to fully understand how amazing this character is in the future. Without giving any plot spoilers as promised, Mirko is what I would equate to a grown-up female Bakugo. Fearless in battle and some of the most badass facial expressions we have seen in the series to date. While My Hero Academia has many female characters that are more than capable heroes in their own right, I always felt that they were missing that kind of character. The female that went in with no fear just to beat the crap out of villains. Thankfully, Horikoshi gifted us Mirko to fill that void. As for her actual design, Mirko is absolutely 100% beautiful. She is no question the most physically fit female hero we have seen outside of perhaps Nana Shimura, with thighs that honestly make me ashamed to have slacked so much on leg day. <laughs> she is also part bunny, with freaking red eyes, which is super cool. While I am not personally into anthropomorphic characters, those of you who are should treat this woman as your queen. Absolutely gorgeous and equally kick-ass. Nearly at the top of our list, we have the student that I just referenced, Katsuki Bakugo. Having been interacting for years with fans of the series, I have come to realize Bakugo is typically someone you love or can't stand. Count me into the former camp, without question. I won't dive into it here, but to me, Bakugo is a very misunderstood character by many. One of the reasons so many fans do love him is his outbursts of rage and confidence. The best part? Nearly every time he talks, you can see with the expression on his face just how he wants his words to be interpreted. If you were someone who thought there was only one or two levels to the emotion of anger, Bakugo is out to prove there are at least seven. Just be sure to know the difference between his anger and his confidence. The latter shines far more often than you may initially perceive. 
As for his looks, I always kind of thought his hair was reminiscent of an explosion itself. Rather on the nose, but effective nonetheless. As for his costume, it's freaking awesome. I have heard some of his detractors say his arm gauntlets are over the top and lame. I think they're incredibly cool. They serve a legit function in helping his arms absorb the recoil of his explosions and also carry enough weight to be used as melee weapons. While I love everything about Lord Explosion Murder, and he did come in first in the sports festival, he falls just short of the top spot on today's video. If you've been following my channel for a while, the character I have at number one will probably not surprise you. Hell, even if you're new here, the top spot will still probably be as expected. But I think we can all agree, the man deserves it. That being said, you could argue that it is cheating a bit considering All Might has two character designs. Well, actually three. Or four. Nah, forget those for now, we're gonna focus on the main two today. His buff, post-injury form, and his weakened state. Being the symbol of peace that he is, it was always important that he had a look that distinguished himself from others. What Horikoshi did was simply brilliant, in my opinion. His buff form is, well, buff. He is a mountain of a man standing well over 7 feet tall with biceps that make the greatest bodybuilders look like Gumby. He has, of course, his trademark smile, serving as a beacon to citizens that they will be okay, and a warning to villains that their evil is about to be vanquished. The greatest aspect of this form, in my humble opinion, is the unique shading that covers his entire body. It beautifully serves as a visual representation of just how much this man stands apart from the rest. There is no one like him from his abilities and prowess, to his ideals and passion for justice. All of what I just said makes his other form even more remarkable. While it is still the same man with the same virtues, his weakened state serves as a reminder that being a hero is not only difficult, but can have an everlasting impact on your life. He has given everything he has to protect the world, and despite receiving a mortal wound, still does absolutely everything he can to inspire the hearts of citizens and pros around the world. From the nasty wound he has on his stomach, to the deep, sunken eyes on his face, there can be no mistake that while he is the greatest hero to have ever lived, he has also given all his might to live out his dream. And with that, I have shared with you the 10 greatest character designs in My Hero Academia. In my opinion, of course. I hope I did a decent job explaining my reasoning for each entry, and like I said at the beginning, I would love to hear your own personal list down below. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I would love to do more top 10 videos about My Hero Academia, as well as other anime. Leave suggestions of what you'd like me to tackle next below. Until next time, this has been Mighty Gazelle, hoping you all have a mighty day. See you guys.